From the time of its founding until its expansion in the 1980s, life in O'Fallon centered around the businesses and the homes that lined Main Street. When we were in Bill and Babel's Cafe, they had a fireman's dance one Saturday night. People would go to the dance and then they'd come over to the cafe for refreshments and so forth. Mom tells about that night they served 500 hamburgers and uh, Larry got to make the, the hamburgers and he got 10 to the pound. So they, they weren't very big hamburgers, but they only sold for 15 cents a piece. So you couldn't expect much more than that. I was, had the job of going over to Obrecht, uh, I think it was Obrecht's uh, meat market, maybe Orf, I don't know. But anyway, bring home 10 pounds of hamburgers and then with using an ice cream scoop, we use the ice cream scoop and get one scoop full of hamburger and put it on this thing with a piece of wax paper on, put the scoop down, close it up, we got one hamburger patty. And so we got 10, 10 patties per pound and uh, we did that. And then of course we had uh, an evening meal that mom usually fixed and that was not only for us as a family, but she knew about how many people would be coming in wanting to have that particular plate lunch. You couldn't come in and order off the menu whatever you wanted. You got the plate lunch of the day, whatever it happened to be at that time. And in the back was the pool room and some pretty good pool sharks existed and gambling was illegal. But the, the Pool players didn't really know that or pay attention to it because it was 10 cents a game. Uh, whoever paid it, the loser usually paid for the next game. And then they, they bet on the games, and I don't know how they did it, but one guy was really good, and they were careful who, who played against him. And uh, that was a, a time when I was able to do my homework when I was going to high school when, between games, and with only three tables, so it didn't take me long to do that. But it was a, a really a good time for my life. Westoff's Grain and Mercantile had everything from groceries to hardware. But Christmas at Westoff's was really special because back then in O'Fallon you didn't find toys during the year and um, so the only time toys came out was at Christmas time. And Westoff's always took one end of their building with the big windows and put a toy room in there with a Christmas tree. So we'd always ask mom if we could please go down to Westoff's to look in the toy room and make our wish list. So we'd go down there and Mr. and Mrs. Westoff were always there and we'd say, could we go in the toy room please? And they would say, sure, just be good. So we'd walk into the toy room and it was so magical because they had tables set up around the perimeter of the, the room with a Christmas tree with bubble lights on it and uh, you could look at all the toys that were out for that year. Besides groceries, Gennemans Mercantile offered shoppers clothing, shoes, and basic household necessities. Well, uh, we lived right behind the Gennemans store, so we didn't always walk up the street and go around to the front door. We just entered through the back, and they also would have live chickens back in there. People would bring chickens in to sell at the store, and I think even once in a while they'd have a calf or a cow there. And, uh, of course, then we'd go in through the storage area and we'd find the blocks of salt for the cattle and the pickle jar. And I think they even had a thing with some kind of preserved fish in it and all. And, and then after you got out of the storeroom right away was the meat counter where they'd slice the meat and all. And uh, mom would send us over there with a list maybe for groceries and uh, they would box up whatever, you know, she had on the list and they'd bring it in bushel baskets and they'd deliver it to your home. They had a little truck, but of course our house was right there, so they'd just walk over with a bushel of groceries and bring it in your kitchen and deliver it. In December of 1958, fire destroyed Gennemans Mercantile, forever changing the face of Main Street. When the store burnt, oh yeah, I mean, it, uh, at night, I mean, I guess there was, uh, I don't know, gasoline cans going off in that thing, or propane, or uh, ammunition. Ammuni and ammunition. That was another thing that they sold, you know. Everybody, every store sold shotgun shells or, or rifle shells or something like that. And the ammunition going off, or a propane tank or something like that exploding. And uh, we lived, well, not that far. I mean, O'Fallon was very small. And you could, I could say, you could see the inferno uh, in the sky and that burnt up probably all night long and I know the next morning uh, when we got going down for high school it was still smoldering but uh, basically it was it was down then and uh, yeah that was a loss O'Fallon I think. 
Main Street was once lined with beautiful stately homes. One of the oldest, the home of Nicholas Kreckel, O'Fallon's founder, was where his daughter Mary Westhoff lived for many years. We lived with Grandma. My piano was in the living room. I took lessons from the nun. She was better than I. She took from a local lady. And um, it, um, Grandma taught me to sew. In the summer, I sewed a lot. And Bertha had a pedal machine, and Bertha lived with Grandma all her life. She was not married. She was a little bitty lady. And um, she wrote for the Banner News. Mm -hmm. And how, how she knew what to put in the Banner News, she was not married. She didn't have no car. Mm. Crank phone and everybody she listened. listened. She didn't talk. Yeah, she didn't see that many people. Of course, we can't forget the railroad. Without it, O'Fallon might never have existed. Yeah. When the trains would come through, that black smoke would just cover Grandma's house. Mm -hmm. And if we were out in the yard, it was just black so smoke all over everything. You didn't dare hang the clothes in. Mom knew when to hang clothes, Grandma's clothes out, so did I. But there was a five o'clock one that would come, and this is a little incline coming up from St. Peter's now on the railroad. And steam engine had to get up steam to come up there. And it started out chug, 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 chug. And boy, you'd know it's five o'clock, time to get up. In the years to come, O'Fallon would spread out in every direction. But for those who remember the small town, virtually everything happened right here along Main Street.